Now we have Jason David. Thank you for joining me this Thank evening. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming back on, telling our viewers about what is going on with CBD and how it has helped your son with his seizures. Uh, from the last time we were on, uh, and we had a long discussion about CBD, about how the federal government has a patent on it, uh, patent number 6630507. I recommend everyone to check that out. Google it. It has a lot of information about um, about what's what CBD is. And people that want to get educated and know what they can do outside the realm of of taking pills, they could look into CBD because it helps so many different things. It helps out arthritis, epilepsy, cancer, it helps out headaches, it helps out autism, it helps out so many different things. And there's statistics on this patent that FDA and NIH own that can, they can if people educate themselves, they could learn that it's non-toxic, it doesn't cause side effects, it doesn't cause addiction, there's no withdrawals, and the side effects are actually beneficial because it kills bad brain cells and regrowth of good brain cells. So um, I've been out in the public, I've done a lot of different TV shows and magazines and different stuff like that is because I'm raising awareness because people can save their lives, save their children's lives. It's helped save my son's life and that was the most important thing to me. And I thought it would be a sin not to tell people about something that's beneficial that can help save a family member's life or their own life or help out the suffering or, you know, how if they try it once and change their whole life for the rest of their life, this one thing that's been so forbidden, the M word, you know? So that's why I've been out there um, fighting for my son and for other children. And now it's gone actually worldwide. I get emails from around the world. Um, it was on the Sanjay Gupta special, the top neurologist for CNN, had a special called uh, Weed. And um, it's, it's gone all over the country. Every single state has people that have hearts and the care that want to be heroes, that, that want to come out and say, hey, you know what, this is helping children out. And it's not about politics or money or about anything else, but just saving a life. Saving a child's life that doesn't have a voice, that's suffering, that um, you know gives them some kind of of, of childhood or, or 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 relief of pain. You know, it's just it's not fair letting these children suffer just because they don't have a voice and they might not be um, detrimental to society and, and different things. We can't let them sit there and suffer and let them die. Uh, it's my son. I think God gave me him for a reason, and my mission now is to help out other people as many as people as I can. Recently, we've had parents contact me that needed uh, CBD, that their kids were about to have brain surgeries. Uh, they're going to cut out their brains, or they're going to add in a VNS, a vagus nerve stimulator, just shocks the brain. And we talked to the parents, and we said, you know what, why don't you just try it? If it works, it works. If not, go get the brain surgery. And we've had five parents recently here in California that uh, have started it, and they canceled their brain surgery. We have some parents that had brain surgeries and they started using CBD and now they go back and their kids have done so so much worse after the brain surgeries, like they're literally vegetables afterwards and um, they're on ventilators, they can't breathe uh, by themselves after the surgeries and now they're using CBDs and the kids are getting off the ventilators and they're stop seizing and they're coming off the pharmaceuticals and the parents are looking back and saying, what if, what if I would have tried CBD before the brain surgery? You know, and, and how if we had this as a first instead of a last? Another thing we have problems with is everyone saying it's a it's an entry drug. Well, parent, people forget. <laughs> I know it's it's, it's people yeah. forget um, ahead, that you know people drink first before marijuana and alcohol is much more easier easier to access. Uh, not just that, children these days are all over the internet getting um, Robitussin and Robotrippin, or or they're getting their f parents' pharmaceuticals. That's that's the real epidemic we have here locally. I mean. The other day I was in a parking lot um, speaking with someone that knew who I was about the, the medical marijuana issue for my son and a guy rides up on his bicycle asking me, hey, uh, I need some pills, can you help me get some pills? And I'm like, no, no, why would I get you pills? He goes, well, I need them, I'm addicted. And that's what the problem is here in town. I mean, it's just, uh, it, it, that's what people are addicted to. And 150,000 people die a year from pharmaceutical drugs. You know, in 5,000 years, no one's ever died from marijuana. Well, I know uh, when I was listening to the videotape from the City Council, and we'll try to play a short excerpt from that if we have time, one of the City Council members, uh, Councilman Lopez, was concerned about, uh, my words, thugs moving into town. I believe another one of the speakers actually used that term as well. And if somebody was growing uh, marijuana or going to be, uh, again, my word, uh, a dealer yeah. in the neighborhood, he was concerned about undesirables coming into the neighborhood and uh, 
buying this drug. And one of the speakers thereafter said, thugs will be thugs no matter where they go, a paraphrase of what he said. And the CBD that you're talking about is not the same thing as, you know, smoking marijuana. Smoking no, marijuana. no um, CBD and THC are yin and yang. We've been trying to educate these council members. Um, some people um, don't want to be educated, it feels like. Uh, I just want to teach people and show them the facts, show them the videos of the children suffering. You know, the council members that are on board saw the videos that we've been helping out the children. They've done their research. The people that are doing the research are finding out this is beneficial. Why is this not out? You know, our constitution was written on hemp. Uh, George Washington, our first president, used hemp, had hemp, hemp farms. Um, the last three presidents we've had in office, George Bush, Bill Clinton, and Obama, have all smoked marijuana. And one of the things he had to bring, to bring up is saying that half a Christian kid goes and gets the marijuana. Well, CBD is actually probably more beneficial if they do take it because it's non-psychoactive. And if they do take it, they wouldn't want it because it doesn't give them a high. Uh, it's non-toxic. It doesn't have the euphoria. It has the medical benefits of it. We carry CBD in us. Uh, we have CB receptors. In our brain, we have a CB1 and CB2 receptor. So when I give it to my son, Jaden, it helps out his neurological flow. And that's what we've been trying to teach people is about the education. If the FDA has a patent on it saying that it's good for you, it's a neuroprotecting antioxidant, then how is it then how is it Ill federally illegal? How does the government own a patent on a plant? That's, that's, the, that's the thing that shocks me. Yeah. So once again, you're saying about the thugs. Well, I understand that. That's what's going on in Modesto right now. That's the problem in Modesto we have right now is the crime in Modesto. And the business is shutting down. Having these people come, come, come to California, the Stanley brothers, um, they have a chance to, to start the next Silicon Valley here of CBD. We have an opportunity to, to help out the businesses around here. Modesto is shutting down. If you go anywhere in Modesto, I mean, you can look around. Every business is shutting down. 10 10 10 Street, where the city council meeting is going to be at tomorrow, um, you look around there, there's nothing there. It's a ghost town. And recently they had another protest about the business shutting down. This could be a big, huge opportunity for us to help out the community. We have all these farmlands. I mean, I'm sure that if people did their research on hemp, and, and figure it out how much, how much money they can make off hemp, people would be more interested in that. Um, it's not that, we're not asking for grows of marijuana to, to sell 20 sacks in the streets. What, we, what we're asking for is, a, is, a, is the, the Colorado brothers to come here. If you, if you look into them and see what they're doing there, they're very welcomed in their city. And what they do is they have a plant and they're not growing marijuana in houses and, and like they are doing right now with the, being illegal, but they have a, a place where they're growing it, manufacturing it, and they're giving out the medicine to children that need it to the parents. They give a certain amount, and not just that, they're not giving plant material like the buds that everyone thinks, and it's not THC, it's CBD. So THC is the one that's known to give you euphoria. CBD is, is the one with the health benefits. I mean, P, there, is, there is things for THC that do work, but I would recommend most people should abstract the medicine from the plant and use it. I mean, I've known so many people being healed from cancer using THC and other, other different things. MARSA, I've heard of people getting the, the, the oil and rubbing on their MARSA and it goes away on, on melanoma, on so many different things. And it's because it kills bad cells and regrowth of good cells. So I'm not knocking THC, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the, the plant material that's non-toxic that can help these children save their lives. Talk about bringing jobs to the Central Valley, Modesto specifically, yeah. with all the farmland. I mean... How many jobs would be brought here if the industry would be the breakthrough? And I think uh, the woman actually says uh, in the clip that I think we'll play here in just a minute, she talks about uh, the that Modesto could actually be kind of the trailblazer yes. for this. And I, I was quite encouraged by um, the new councilman member, Tony Madrigal, yes. uh, talking about why can't the city council, as a government body, write a letter as a council to support uh, the pieces of legislation that are already After in place? Him. Yeah, and I was also impressed with uh, new council member uh, Bill Zalaki yes. and, and current sitting councilman uh, Dave Cogdale Jr., their support in yes. this. Um, also John Gunderson. And, yes, and yeah. And Jeannie. Jenny Canoyer. Jenny yeah. Canoyer. She's so amazing too. Let's go ahead and see if we can play some of this. I'm going to see if I can. Councilmember Gunderson. Here we go. Um, can't this council tonight uh, request that staff work on uh, draft correspondence for our approval at a future meeting? We can't take action tonight. No, but we can take. Oops. Oh, I think we may have lost the inter internet connection. 
that may have been the reason why we couldn't stream live tonight on YouTube. I'm not sure. So if we get that back, we'll go back to this. Meanwhile, we'll just let it set. Um, so yes, th th there were several council people who were open to uh, educating themselves? Ed educating not only themselves, but edu helping to educate the public yes. as well. And the other thing that I was really encouraged by um, Madrigal, Zalaki, and Cogdill was that they wanted to open the, up this dialogue and see where it goes. Yes. I was really, really encouraged to see that because so many times when you bring something new or scary yeah. because it's unknown to a council, they're like, no, it's not going to happen. And I understand where, where they're coming from, you know, um, that we've had problems in, with, in, in Modesto with dispensaries and different stuff like that. But we've asked, we've welcomed them to come look at everything. We can set up a, a, a station there for them and we can get people to, to like the police station. We have a mini st substation there saying, no, that this is not going out to recreational. This is mm -hmm. going out for medicine. Well, that, what we're asking for is safe access. That's well, we I heard you talk about that. And as well, um, that kind of brings up the other question. And that is, you want to bring something safe, a drug, mm -hmm. a, a non supplement a non pharmaceutical yes. by a pharmaceutical company mm -hmm. to this area how much resistance have you personally endured to kind of carry that torch of a non uh, something that you can't go to Walmart drugstore or to Walgreens and purchase mm -hmm. over the, I mean uh, with a prescription yeah. this is this is a uh, kind of a non conventional yeah. Supplement. Well, it, 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 it is now, but if you go back to, to when mankind started, we use plants, we use herbs, we use spices, and we didn't need prescriptions back then. It's a God given that we've, well, this plant's been put on earth. Everyone uses and abuses everything. You know, if people use and abuse it, that's their, their own business, but people are going to find it, marijuana no matter what. Even the internet. So we're going to close this down and talk with a live person. <laughs> so, so um, people are going to find no matter, marijuana no matter what. If they're criminals, if they're not criminals, or, or whatever it is, okay? Um, but for the people that need it, the safe access, for these children that are dying that are innocent, that don't have no other choice, there should be a safe access place for them. That's the number one thing we're asking for. If you save one life, you're a hero. Think about saving thousands of lives. And since I've been on these different shows on CNN and different things I've done, um, parents from around the world are contacting me and they're asking me, they're like, you know what, you have to fight for us. You're our voice. And I feel obligated not just for my son, but for all the other children out there, because parents are sending me emails of their children having seizures. I mean, last, three days ago, we had a child in New Jersey pass away that was a year and a half old. The parents were begging me to get CBD in New Jersey. And Chris Christie has, were, was having a lot of problems with that. And, um, and now, you know, the child passed away. It's little Sabina, one and a half years old. Not just that, we lost uh, Nolan in North Carolina. And we've lost five other children this year to Gervais syndrome that I know the parents, and they've been fighting to get CBD. And half they had a chance to use it before their children died at, the, at a young age, less than 10. And I understand there's political reasons that people don't want to do, don't want to help. But what kind of, what kind of person is not, is not, is not going to lose his political seat for helping a child save their life? You know, I mean, it's not, it's not, you're one not giving, would hope. yeah, one would hope. Um, but like I said at the, at the meeting, we're looking for heroes, not politicians. And my son needs a hero. And you know what? I, I think we we're very blessed that some of the people understood it and, and, and was trying to educate themselves. And I think that's the most important thing is education. You know, it's, it's not about, you know, smoking weed and having fun and all that. And I understand some people do that, but people are doing the same thing with pharmaceuticals. Go on YouTube, robo-tripping, or, or, or you can see people popping ex, uh, uh, Oxycontin, Vicodin, Methadone. We have a Methadone clinic here in Modesto. You don't think that's a hazardous to our health here in Modesto? And, and we have people standing outside waiting for their Methadone hit? We're contributing to that, but that's okay because government it has money involved in it. And that's what it boils down to. It's money and politics. To, and to save a child's life is the most important thing, you know, and, and in other states, we have Utah, Kentucky, and all the other liberal, I mean, sorry, uh, conservative states, there's there's Republican, even Republicans, everyone's always scared about the like, Republicans coming out and helping, but these Republicans are coming out, you know why? Because they have a heart. The thing past the politics, and how Mayor Marsh can, can change his legacy in Modesto is, is right here. You know, he wants a legacy in Modesto with, with being a good mayor. Well, how about saving children's lives? How if you hear, how if you, how if he brings in this thing and, he, and you hear about so many different lives changing? Mm -hmm. And we have the video proofs and evidence. You cannot deny the facts. Mm -hmm. 
if, if, I, if, there, if the facts weren't there, I would understand. But we have the medical documentation, we have the videos, we have, we have the proof. And it's coming all over, and it's not just one doctor. It's doctors all over the country are jumping on board. Why not be ahead of everyone else right now here in Modesto, California, right. then be behind like we always are? This, this city is plagued with crime. I mean, all I ever hear is on, on CVTV, uh, Central Valley Television on Facebook, is, is crime after crime after crime after crime. It doesn't stop. So the city is not so goody-goody two-shoes, but we can help change this city. You know, how if we took, how if we took, them, how if we took the, the illegal stuff out and stopped making it illegal? How, people wouldn't be doing the stuff they're doing. The crime wouldn't be happening as much, especially if they can make money, if the city can make money and, and tax it or do anything they can to help out this city. The city's gone straight downhill. I've lived in the city for 35 years, and this is the worst I've ever seen in the city. And where it starts at, it starts at the management. I used to manage a jewelry store in the mall for 11 years. When I first went to that jewelry store, it was a Target store to close down. After I walked in there, we were, we were, we were one of the top stores in the West Coast, top 10 in the whole West Coast out of 450 stores in the company. And I won all these different awards, and it started at management. If the management changes it, then everything will change through, through the city. And right now, that's what we need. We need good leadership. And as an elected official, I think that you got, that they should be working for the, the people instead of for themselves. Well, maybe after you kind of get smooth sailing with this, you can apply for being city manager for city of Modesto. <laughs> Everyone's been asking me, you know what, I, actually I've been approached a lot of times about that. I bet you have. Um, but it, it, that's, my goal is to, it, is to spend as much time as, my, as I can with my son's precious life. Well, you and said he needs me, and, and he's a daddy's boy, and I, I think that I think that you know what I you know, he looks at me because he and when he looks in my eyes, you know, when he's doing well, he's looking in my eyes like, like this is the I know that he's he you're fighting for me, dad. Mm -hmm. And then when he, my son's having a seizure and he's looking in my eyes, and like he's having a seizure, and he's like going away into the seizure, and, and I look into his eyes and, and I'm looking at him like, he's like like daddy help me, and I, and I and I feel helpless, and that's the hardest thing in the world. A few minutes ago, you said that your son needs a hero. I think he's got the biggest hero that any son could ask for in his Thank father. You. And you were saying also that this could be Marsha's legacy. Mm -hmm. It could be a huge legacy for him mm -hmm. to save just one child. We were talking about saving one child, saving a hundred children, a thousand children. How important is that one child? It's it's as important as a million children if yes. it's your child. And it's time that we put the politics aside and we open up that dialogue and we try to save that one child. And I hope that your child, this will be taken care of soon enough so that it will save your child. Yes. I know uh, in the um, city council you were talking that time is running out Every day that goes by, the clock ticks by. It does. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it does. Seizures cause brain damage. Mm -hmm. It does you know, for all of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all here for a certain amount of time, but for your son, that <clears throat> clock is spinning a lot faster than yes. for anyone else. And it's important that this is not uh, overlooked no. any longer than what it has to be. No. We need to get on this right away. It's not fun and games. It's not about it's not. money. It's about lives. I have seen those videos. I've seen. Remember I've that little boy I showed you that one video? Mm -hmm. One after, one hour after That's they gave right. him the medicine, he snapped out of a yeah. eight month long like twitch. You just stuck there for eight mm -hmm. months. Yeah. It's, it's, if, if the videos are powerful, and if you see the, the doc, you know the documentation, educate yourself. You can't deny it. At the city council, you were talking about uh, the previous week or uh, the last time you were there. They just wanted to have you. Hurry up, so they That's what could, it felt like. So they could uh, go home. And you made a very good point at the December third meeting that if the meeting is over quickly, they can go home to their children, to their families. But it's it's not over for you. No, it's not over for me or my son. You know, last night he had. Um, so we're weeding him off this medication. He has brain zaps during the wean, but the doctors never even told us that when they gave us the medication. So he's asleep at night, and he'll be sleeping, and out of nowhere he'll have one big brain zap, and he'll fly out of bed, and I'll have to grab him, hold him, and pray on him, and, and pray that it stops. And, and, and that's a part of the withdrawals, but we know it's, it's, a, it's a very, very hard decision to make. It's very hard to, 
to get them off these medications, it's, it's a very, very frustrating position that we've been put in. And, uh, you know, we've been blessed taking them off 20 pills from 22 down to two, but, you know, how if we had the best CBD out there? The one I have, it, you know, it has to be a 20 to one ratio out of 20,000 strains of this plant, only two of them carry this medicine. So it's not just any any marijuana. It's not, you know, it has to be made correctly. And, and there's people selling it online, they call it snake oil, you know, and we need, correct good medicine for our children and we're doing whatever it takes to save their lives you know my son was in the ambulance over 40 times and now we, you know the only two times I've ever been in the ambulance since we started medical marijuana was during the withdrawals you know of the last medication of the benzopanazepines and um i just hope and pray that you know these people um have a heart and i think that's the most important thing you know and, and you know hopefully anyone that wants to come out there tomorrow and support us please come out there we'll be there We'll be wearing green, and if you don't have any green, you could put a, something green on or a little band or something with green on to come support us. Um, we just say tomorrow at the city tomorrow, council meeting. Yeah, tomorrow at the city council meeting, 10, 10, 10 Street at uh, 5 o'clock. Hopefully that, um, you know, we dropped off some packets today for them to, to educate them, different um a DVD with the Sanjay Gupta special was uh, with, with of the, the weed documentary about how it's helped out and how he's changed his mind. Uh, and then also uh, we dropped off the federal government patent to them and also other uh, universities documentation about how it's been helping out children with epilepsy. But it also helps out so much more than epilepsy and it's not just children, it's also adults. So I don't want to just leave it at that because there's adults with epilepsy suffering too that's been benefiting from it too. So I think that it's just anyone that's sick needs, needs a chance to be able to use it. And right now there's a company called GW Pharmaceutical that's coming out with their own CBD too. but. Of course, there's always chemicals in there too. They, they never tell you that. Uh, there's, I don't never heard of a pharmaceutical company coming out with something that's uh, this all natural. And we have a saying: is don't mess with Mother Nature because that's what you know that ruined our children. That we feel most of the parents with children with Dervais. I mean, I'm not gonna talk for all of them, but I'm sure some children are born with Dervais. But there's two cases already been won at Supreme Court is after they got the vaccinations that they, it activated the gene mm -hmm. and caused the seizures. And even Jaden's uh, pediatrician here in town, one of them had to give him Jaden. I told him, told her like four times, don't give him the shot, don't give him the shot. She harassed me, made me feel like a bad parent. And right when she gave him the shot, he went into a seizure for an hour. And she had called 911. And um, she was screaming, yelling, call 911. Call, she had called 911. They took Jaden across the street. I had to find my insurance for seven months. And I heard her tell, tell her nurse I shouldn't have gave him that shot. Um, and And it was just, I couldn't believe she did it, and that, that was one of the points of Jade, ruining Jaden's life, like even worse when Jaden started getting much, much worse. And they took him across the street to uh, to doctor's hospital from my pediatrician's office, and uh, cost me three thousand five hundred dollars. I had to fight to insurance for seven months. They come out saying, "Why did you, why did you have to take him one less than a mile?" And and uh, why would you do that? There was no no necessary. I said, "If the doctor's calling nine one one." What am I supposed to do if she's scared? If the doctor's calling 911 scared, what am I supposed to do as a father to a six month old baby that just has immunization shots and he's having seizures? You know, so uh, it's been such an uphill battle, and every day it's just a fight to save this child's life. You know, there's so many other issues we're having right now, you know, it just never stops. But you know what? I've, you know, I have faith in God, and I think that, you know, everyone has their own faith. I'm not pushing mine on theirs, but you know what? He's put me through this and gave me a lot of strength. Take a few minutes and tell the viewers where we can see some of those videos and your other interviews with CNN. And I know that you had a um, an extensive interview in the LA Times, I believe it yeah, was. Yeah, front page of the Times, yeah. Yes, so please take a moment and, okay. and tell the, the viewers where we can see some of that. You could Google Jason David Medical Marijuana or you could just Google Jason David or Jaden David Medical Marijuana and see the different stories. We've been on the news plenty of times. Um, uh, we've also been on uh, CNN, there's LA Times, so there's different things you can Google and check out. Uh, also what I recommend is people uh, look up the realm of caring and also the um, the Stanley Brothers, the Sanjay Gupta weed special. I mean, if Sanjay Gupta's coming, I mean, just plain and simple, if Sanjay Gupta comes out, everyone's always looks up to him. He was he was almost going to be Surgeon General of this country and um, and he, he didn't want to take the job, but um, but if he's coming out and saying that he's changed his mind on it and shows all the facts and statistics and how it's how they're having studies all over the world except for here um, that 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 should be a big learning experience uh, also if you want to check out we have a Facebook Jason and Jaden's journey with Jaden's you know progression and all the different fights we're going through and all of this different stuff is going on um, and that's it pretty much well thank you for coming on and again I encourage you to 
join Jason David down at Modesto City Council, 1010 10th Street, uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. At I believe the meeting starts at 5:30. But are you going to congregate outside we'll about at, five we'll, o'clock? We'll try to be there at five o'clock, and okay. uh, we'll, you know, get our group going, and you know, talk about it, and you know, get pumped about it, because you know what, this is this is huge for our children, and we, we're going to fight for them no matter what. I mean, we're not going to stop. It's been seven years, and you know what, until until you know, until something happens where I can't do it anymore. I mean, I'm going to fight for my son's life. I mean, that's what every father should do, every mother should do no matter what, what the situation is. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I thank look forward for to me. seeing you, thank you tomorrow night. Oh, thank you.